Today, my guest on We Are High Stakes Poker is Andrew Robo. Andrew first got into poker when he watched ESPN's coverage of the World Series of Poker with his father as a teenager. By the time he was 17 and 18, he was already playing online. And by the time he was in his early 20s, he was a self-made millionaire. Today, we talk about those early beginnings in his life, the fear of failure that really drove him on to be a success. We talk about purpose, we talk about meaning, we talk about the vision of the future that he has and how he wants to do so much good in the world and the strategies that led for him being one of the truly great poker players in the world. So, first time we've met, Andrew. Nice to meet you. And you too. Tell me a little bit about yourself, something, something that, that, like an icebreaker, something that I can get to know you a little bit quicker because... I know it's very difficult to just go, boom, this is who I am and get to know me. But what, what's the most important thing I need to know about you? Um, I'm just, I'm married with a dog and I like to gamble. That's, um, you know, pretty much my life. Spending time with my family, my dog and uh, gambling. Has that gamble always been there? Can you, can you remember a time when it, when it happened, when it, when it really became prominent? Um, you know, I always really like to play games, but gambling... Um, you know, I started playing poker in high school with my friends. And that was, I got into it because it, it was a game, but then the whole gambling element makes it even more exciting. Because sometimes games become repetitive, but in gambling, there's so much chance that every day is different. You never know what's gonna happen. It's always an adventure. And did that, did you ever have a problem with the money? Was, you know, because obviously gamble comes money unless you're doing it for sweets or whatever. Yeah. Um, you're gonna lose some. Have you, how do you feel around the financial side of things? Uh, you know, I never had a really a problem with thinking about it with money. Cause when I first started playing poker, you know, I was a broke high school kid hmm. and I had no money. And uh, I made a lot of money playing poker very young. So for me, I've never really like when I was younger, when you know I was working my way up, I always thought about it. Well, even if I lose all of my money, you know I'm still way ahead in poker because I spent you know money on traveling and just living life. So, um, how old was you about then when you was really doing well? Uh, I think I made a lot of money when I first started playing poker. Was when I had finished high school. I was 18 years, or maybe I was 18 or 19 years old. I must have been 18. And in between high school and college, I think that summer I made like seventy or eighty thousand dollars playing poker online, which mm. for an eighteen-year-old kid, you know, is all the money in the universe. That's quite incredible because my my boy's seventeen and yeah. he's just started a part-time job, and he was he was telling me yesterday he wanted to buy himself a forty-pound Gucci bandana, yeah. but he said there's something stopping me, Dad, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> so how, how on earth? What, what would he do if he had eighty thousand? I mean, was what was you like around then, around money with eighty thousand at that age? I mean, how, how, what was you thinking, feeling? Uh, you know, I thought it was awesome. I thought. Um... You know, I was always kind of a rebel, and I thought I had found a way where I could buck the system, you know, where I didn't have to go to school, didn't have to get a job in a cubicle, um, you know, and I had enough money to do whatever I wanted, mm -hmm. which all I wanted to do was go out and have, you know, 10 drinks and travel. So that was plenty of money to do that. Before you found poker, what did you want to do? You know, when, you, when you're dreaming as a, as a kid, what is it that you wanted to be? You know, I'm not, I don't really know. I knew for sure that I don't want to follow the conventional path. I'm, um, you know, the first time I saw poker on TV, I wanted to be a professional poker player. I thought this is so cool. These guys don't have a job, don't have to work for the man. They just play a game all day. And uh, that was very appealing to me. And what was it about your life at the time that made you, made a real impression on you that you said, there's no way I'm going to have this conventional life. Was it, was it a struggle in school? Was it anything to do um, with that? Just to me, it always seemed kind of like, you know, fake to me. Maybe, I think nowadays maybe people are more open-minded with the advent of, you know, social media and the internet. But where I grew up was a very, like, prominent suburban town where everyone kind of was encouraged to follow the traditional path. Like where I went to high school, I think 98% of the people went to college after high school. And um, that whole path never really made sense to me. 
like, you know, in middle school, they tell you, oh, you have to do really good and get good grades because high school is going to be so much harder. And then in high school, they're like, oh, you have to go get good grades to go to a good college. And then you got to go to a good college to get a good job and, you know, make good money. And for me, I just never wanted to do that. So I was always kind of like, what's the point? And I guess there was also a part of you that was like, okay, I don't want to do this, but I do want the money and I do want a nice <laughs> lifestyle. So what am I going to do? Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's what, you know, really appealed to me in poker. That was kind of a way to like bonk the traditional lifestyle or the, the traditional system and still do what I wanted with my life. Did you, do, did you avoid the job, uh, the job uh, scenario completely or did you, did you at some point get a job? Uh, I, no, I worked some odd jobs when I was in high school. Uh, I worked in my friend's greenhouse, like unloading like trees and flowers uh, once a week. And then I even worked as a janitor. And actually, uh, I had made quite a bit of money playing poker when I was maybe like 17, maybe like $1,000, which, mm. you know, to, to me, that was a lot of money at the time. And then I lost it all. And I had to take a job as a janitor just to get some money to play poker again. Right. And then uh, after that, I kind of had a little bit more respect for money because playing poker was a lot more fun than cleaning toilets. Being a janitor, yeah, yeah. I get that. Um, Looking back through your life now, I'm going to think yeah. about back through your life. A lot of us grow quite considerably when we when we go through suffering or pain. Yeah. Um, what are some of the toughest spots you found yourself in life that you wouldn't change because they brought so much value to who you are today? Toughest spots in life. Well, when I was starting out in poker, you know, I had some downswings and that was tough. I was always really afraid because like everyone in my life kind of thought I was like a crazy person, like a madman mm -hmm. for trying to be a gambler. I don't know why. It's okay. Getting emotional, losing in the poker game too. But, um, and uh, I was really afraid of failing, of, uh, you know, not making it. And I think that really drove me to succeed. What was it about that moment then that just clicked? Um, actually, I remember a moment I was going to, I was losing in poker and I had probably lost like half of my bankroll. I probably had like 50 or $60,000 left. I was like, oh man, I might have to go back to school. Like everyone's going to tell me I told you so. I was sitting in an airport. I was flying to see uh, Phil Galfond, who's a good friend of mine. He lived in uh, another state. I remember having like an anxiety attack in the airport, like worrying about this. Mm. And that never happened to me before. And then, uh, you know, I went to see Phil, and at the time he was a much, much more talented player than me. And uh, I guess watched him play for a week. And I kind of just saw, okay, like, I still know how to do this. You know, I still know how to play. So I was watching him play, like, the biggest games at the time. And sometimes he would, like, think of things, wouldn't think of a way to play the hand. And I'd tell him, and he'd be like, oh, yeah, that's the correct way to play. So that helped build my confidence in my poker game. It seems like um, poker is very important here in terms of emotional context, but yeah. is, is there also, you, you mentioned that they would, they would, I would be proving them right, or you said something like that. Was there an ex, is there an external factor here as well? Oh, for sure. I mean, poker was just my tool or my vehicle to kind of prove to myself I was enough, you know that. I could do, you know, things that everyone doubted I could do. Who were those doubters? Um, I mean, it wasn't really doubters, you know. I think people around you just want, like, the best for you. And they kind of have their own preconceived notion or their own beliefs just about life, like what you have to do to succeed or be happy. And um, so, I mean, all of my friends and family thought, you know, I was crazy. Because this is when poker was first kind of starting and first growing as a sport and growing in culture. So like when maybe people still think of gamblers this way, but definitely back then they thought any gambler was like, you know, a crazy person who was going to lose their house and become addicted to drugs and ruin their life. I, um, I left school at 16 with no education and I ended up working in the British railway system. And for the next 20 years, I, I got close to becoming managing director. And then I stopped drinking alcohol. And I woke up one morning and thought, what am I 
what am I going to work for? What am I, why am I doing this? Yeah. And I told everyone I was going to quit. And everyone thought I was nuts and nobody would support me. Everybody just wanted to, me to do what they wanted to do. I think because they wanted to protect me. Um, and it was very lonely and I felt really misunderstood. Yeah, I, you know, I can understand that. And I think part of it is a lot of people like you'll be around whatever group you're around and you're all on the same path, right? You kind of all have the same values and outlook on life. And then if someone gets a new idea or a new outlook that's different, you know, from the groups, like uh, one that scares people because it makes them start to question, are they making the right choices in life? Is that really what they want to do? So I think that's where some of it comes from. It's like you're holding a mirror up. Yeah, and exactly. They want to see the reflection. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, exactly. And what are some of those values that are really important to you in life that guide you? Well, you know, I've changed a lot as a person since I first started playing poker, but I think, you know, the main driving force back then was I really wanted freedom. I wanted freedom to do whatever I wanted. You know, I didn't want to have to listen to anyone or take orders from anyone. And then at the same time, it was also fear of failure. And those two things are kind of what propelled me to uh, succeed at poker and get better at poker. It seems like the fear of failure is like a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. Or no, I think it's something, you know, there's, uh, there's values that can serve you at certain times in your life. Um, you know, and for me, when I started out, that was a great motivator because I never would have, you know, worked as hard as I did. And, uh, you know, without that, but at, I think at different points in life, you know, there's times to let everything go. So I know people, uh, some people who are billionaires, you know, who are older and they still have that fear of failure and they can't really you know, enjoy life because that's their primary emotion. Even though they've achieved so much, they're always afraid someone else is gonna be achieving more. So uh, maybe that served them when they were young, but now perhaps it doesn't serve them anymore. It's almost like we need to find, instead of pressing a button to um, get rid of that fear of failure, we need to find a dial, <laughs> dial it down because we need it, Yeah. but we don't want it to go out of control because it can have an adverse effect on our life. Yeah, no, I think that's very uh, wise of you to say. And I think it's just like kind of like changing what your definition of a failure is. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, like some people might think they're a failure, they have a losing day at poker and uh, as a poker player. And that's probably not a very healthy belief because you're gonna have a lot of losing days. And if you're always beating yourself up whenever that happens, you're not gonna have a very happy life. I think your views on values is very astute as well because uh, I, I guess a lot of people think, right, there, here are my fundamentals, here are my values, and yeah. then they don't change them. Well, of course, we need to adapt and we need to change yeah. whether we're playing poker or whether we're in life, right? Yeah, no, for sure, because uh, I mean, if we stop changing and stop evolving and stop getting better, you know, that's when you die basically. So I think that's the most important thing um, is to be adaptable and always be growing and changing. And, um, you know, I think it's important to look at your values too and examine them and kind of think like, okay, I'm on this path in life. And I think everyone is on a certain path in life and it's because of their, you know, values. For me, it was like my desire of freedom and my fear of failure kind of propelled me on my path. And a lot of people, I don't think, think about the reasons why they're doing what they're doing. And if you don't think about them, then you can't change it, so. It's the difference between having a set of values uh, that you can clearly see and you understand I'm not, I would love to have these values, but I'm not following them. Yeah. It's completely different to not even knowing that you have values. Yeah, exactly. And once you, you know, once you realize what they are and you're like, okay, this isn't getting me to my goal or my blueprint of life or whatever, then you can change them. Mm. But if you don't even think about and don't realize what they are, then you're kind of just stuck in a box with, you know, no way to get out. Who, who is surrounding you at the moment? And what is it about those people that you you love? Why why are you why have you got those people in your life? Um, well, I have my wife, you know, she's really supportive. She's totally different than me. I'm kind of an introverted person and she's very extroverted. You know, everyone loves her. She knows how to connect with people. 
And uh, she's always there for me. She's very down to earth and uh, present in the moment. And I, uh, I'm the opposite in a lot of ways. You know, I'm an introvert. I get into my own head. I don't really, uh, I wouldn't say I don't care about people, but like if I see someone, you know, I have no desire to say hi to them. You know, I just want to get off to the gym or the poker game or wherever I'm going. So uh, she's the most important person to me. And then, um, you know, my dog, I love my dog because he's always happy, you know, and is always down to do whatever. And then, uh, you know, I spend a lot of my life playing poker or gambling, so I'm a lot around a lot of gamblers. And I'm fortunate enough to uh, play in really high six games, so I'm around, around a lot of really successful people. So uh, they all have traits I admire and am able to learn from. What about purpose? Do you, do you give any thought to purpose um, in, in yeah. the moment? Why am I here? Why am I playing? What am I doing? Who am I doing it for? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think purpose is very important in life. Because without purpose or meaning, you know, if you win all the money in the world gambling, it's still not going to make you happy. So it's important to kind of have uh, something you're playing for, something, uh, a purpose. And it's also important to have a purpose to be a winner. Because otherwise, if the only purpose is, you know, winning and making more money, then uh, it's easy to lose motivation, I guess, and lose perspective. So what is that purpose then for you? Why, why, why are you playing poker? Well, I'm playing poker. I'm at a point now where financially I wouldn't need to play poker anymore to live, you know, uh, the lifestyle I'm living now. Like, um, I think a lot of people, you know, they think when people reach a certain weather level of wealth, they're like, why do those people even work anymore? They have enough money to do whatever they want. Well, I've seen with people, not just myself, but people, you know, who are far more successful than me, as you reach higher and higher levels of wealth, you're able to do more and more. And at some point, it's not even about just, um, you know, the lifestyle anymore. It's about, okay, now I can start like a charity foundation and they can pursue their passion projects or they can, you know, build a school for their kids and the people in their community or they can employ hundreds of people. So it co like they can go beyond just providing things for themselves. They can start providing things for others around them. Yeah, it's the same advice I keep. My son keeps telling me that he yeah. wants to be a millionaire, and I, yeah. I keep saying to him, "Why?" And he says, "Oh, because I, I I want to have everything that I need in life." And I say, "Well, I have that, but I'm, you don't need to be a millionaire. Why do you want to be a millionaire?" Yeah. And I keep pushing him and pushing him, but obviously he's a he's a little bit young to to get it. Um, before 2018 started sticking on the purpose theme, yeah. was it was there anything in particular that you wanted to achieve this year that was really important to you? Oh, in 2018? Um, I mean, I'm building a house uh, with my wife, so that's really cool. And, uh, you know, we're designing to get everything we want in the house kind of around the lifestyle we like. So that's kind of my big project for the year. Mm -hmm. And are you are you a goals oriented person in particular? Do you do you sit there before the year begins and, and write down your stuff that you're going to do for the year, or do you just wing it? I do do that, but um, I'm not as goal oriented as I used to be, because um, I think that's something my wife has taught me. You know, I used to be very disciplined in a lot of ways, and like, okay, these are my rules, and I'm not going to break them. You know, and um, now I'm a little bit more going to flow and try to just, you know, enjoy life a little bit more. And how's that working out for you? Uh, it's, you know, it's working out with some, <laughs> but I still am who I am. <laughs> you, yeah. you still feel drawn back to those yeah. rules. Yes. What, what, what change are you trying to make in the world, Andrew? What change am I trying to make in the world? Um, I'd just say I want to make a the world a better place and I don't mean that in a grand way but just like being nice to people or you know just giving people an insight into their life or the way they can do things or even a small thing like oh how if they want to be better poker players like how could they play a poker hand better mm -hmm. um I just like to think the interactions I have add up to more positive than negative and moving from purpose to more of 
you know, pressing the fast forward button a little bit. Yeah. Um, I know, I know you, you're not too goals oriented, but what, what are we looking at here three to five years down the line? If, if you're going to fast forward in a time machine and see Andrew Robo, what, what do you want to have ensured that he's done? Um, in three to five years, I'd like to start a family. Um, just because for me, I think, you know, we all are animals. We've evolved through evolution. And I think all living things, that's your primary drive to reproduce. I think um, you talk about meaning and purpose in life. And I think that would just, you know, make my life more meaningful to know um, you have something, you know, when, when you die, you, you left something behind. Um, like a legacy. Yeah, le legacy. So, you know, kids, you, you know, can only influence how they turn out. You know, you can't control it. So, but that would be one thing. You have a lot of fun trying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What about poker? Do, do you have do you have any um, goals to like leave behind a legacy in poker? You know, like if I'm interviewing Phil Elmuth now, he's going to turn yeah. around and say, "Well, I want to be the great. I want to be the greatest World Series of Poker bracelet winner ever." Um, do you have any uh, legacy thoughts like that? I, I don't have thoughts like that because I think what Phil Hellmuth is doing is great, you know, and he's a great ambassador for the sport. But I just think about poker a little bit differently just because there's so much luck in poker and uh, everything's so subjective that, um, you know, it's impo impossible to say who the greatest player is. And, um, you know, I think poker is still, it is kind of a sport in a game, but it's also still gambling. And the point in gambling is kind of do, you know, win as much money as possible. So that's kind of what, you know, I'm aiming for in poker. With the role of luck that comes into it yeah. and the edges between you and your peers being yeah. really tight. Yeah. Um, does envy come into your life at all? Um. No, but it really did. It used to, you know, like when people won a tournament or things like that, you know, and I'd be like, oh, I'm a better player than that guy. Why didn't I win the tournament? Or if what, someone's getting all this press, why don't I get it? Um, you know, I'd be envious. Well, I think that came from a place of insecurity. You know, I didn't feel like I was enough and I still felt like I had something to prove. And, um, you know, now I think I'm just more secure than with who I am. So like if other people are having success or having more success than me, um, you know, I'm happy for them. And how old are you now? Uh, I'm 31. 31, so you were like 17, 18 when you made a load of money and now you're yeah. 31 and you're playing at the highest stakes in the game and you have yeah. been for a very, very long time. Yeah. What, what, are, what are the success principles here for Andrew Robo to become a high stakes poker? What are the milestones? Um, Milestones. Sorry, not the milestones. What are the success principles? Sorry, what are the what are the yeah. key traits that you've developed that you think people should incorporate if they want to be successful? I think it's just always working on getting better. Um, you know, there's been at times like now I think there's tons of players better than me, but there was times where I thought, okay, like right now I'm one of the best players. Mm -hmm. But if you start thinking that way. Um, there's going to be other people who are still working on their game, still approving and still adapting. And if you're not working as hard as they are, you're not going to be one of the best players six months from now. So I think that always be growing, always be improving. And the main thing is, um, you know, adaptability, I think is very important too. Like a lot of American poker players, when Black Friday happened, they were like, oh no, this is the end of the world. I've lost my source of income. I've lost, you know, the sense of purpose in my life and whatever else. And for me that, I never really felt that. I just thought like, okay, this is like just an obstacle. What am I gonna do to get around this and uh, continue on my path? And um, it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because it encouraged me to kind of go and find out and find these, you know, big live games like in Macau and places like that that you know I might have never went to if I could just sit in my house and play online poker. There's a, there's a great book called uh, Beautiful Constraint. I can't remember who wrote it and it, that's what it's all about. It's, people generally look at a constraint as a real negative thing but you can look at a constraint as a real beautiful thing as a way to really push you on to go into a different direction that you would never would have before. Yeah exactly and uh, 
you know, when bad things happen to people, or not bad things, but like, you know, people get an injury or a divorce or things like that, it can, uh, it can be really painful, but it can kind of be like, okay, a wake up call, like this path isn't working, let's find a new path. And um, I think if you're just open-minded and think of it that way, instead of thinking, oh, this is the end of the world, my life's over, that's a much better mindset. Yeah, been through the divorce one, so I, yeah. I, I know that. Yeah. I know that one for sure. Um, what is the one risk that you you're not taking right now? Something you know you should be doing. The risk I'm not taking. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe there isn't one. Yeah. I mean, you can always do more, but uh, nothing just comes to mind. And we talked a little bit there about the success principles of poker yeah. but if somebody's watching this show who just wants to be successful in life or wants to be happy in life yeah. as a successful happy person yeah. um, what advice would you give to those viewers i think in life well i think everyone strives for financial success but like being in the highest levels of gambling, I've been around people with like outrageous levels of financial success, some of their wealthiest people in the world. And a lot of them aren't happy people. So I think something everyone should aim for is just to have positive emotions every day of your life. Because if you can have that, I think you have something, you know, way more than wealth. There's, I think way less people who are you know, happy on a day-to-day -day basis than there are extraordinary wealthy people. Be happy. Yeah. And uh, finally, how does poker make you feel? I, I love poker. Poker, you know, is exciting. Every day is a different day. Every day is a new challenge. And, uh, you know, I've been playing poker for a living for 13 years. And uh, I would say still every day I'm learning new things in poker. I'm getting a little bit better every day. And uh, so it's a very deep game and it, uh, you know, it humbles you, it challenges you and it encourages you to learn. Andrew, thanks for your time, really yep. appreciate that. I am Andrew Robel and 